for what kind of product? I mean, b basically, um, you had mentioned as, as, as earlier as sort of like as a market, you know, like that was billions of twenty-three billion dollars. No, well, I the 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 um, the late fee market, or the size of the late fee for the credit card industry, oh is yes. around you know over twenty-five billion dollars. Okay. Right? It depends how you uh, manage the numbers. Right. Um, that's a huge market, and that, that to me is just, I mean, and some of them may be legitimate late fees, but in my opinion, and this is just personal opinion, uh, that shows that there's um, already some dysfunction, mm -hmm. right, in, in my opinion. But in, in the case, um, and all financial services, there's lots of what I call hidden fees, right, fees that people just don't know there is. And that doesn't happen only in financial services. We have that in all sorts of services. All, right? all things, right. Um, my concern in the financial world, more than the hidden fees per se, is the cost, not direct cost of those hidden fees, but rather the direct, the indirect cost of selling financial products that people that are buying them don't understand them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't mean that in a paternalistic way. I mean that in a very simple way, the equivalent of selling a switch that if you move it up the light goes on and if you move it down the light goes off and that the buyer doesn't understand that basic, basic function yes okay so i'm not talking about highly sophisticated i'm s saying listen somebody just bought a product but they don't understand this basic functioning so when that product is not a consumer product but a product that you're putting your lifetime savings mm -hmm. I think that has a real negative externality and that the fee is the le least of the problems. <laughs> the problem, so for example, mm -hmm. is if you buy a mutual fund that it has a 2% hidden fee, which is would be outrageous, um, that's not the problem. The, pro the major problem is if you bought a fund that goes down 30% and you didn't know that was a possibility, okay? Right. Um, so that that's the real cost, which is the... The, the, the wrong action or the wrong decision based on this the wrong product. information. Yes, yes. Okay. And for me the challenge is that that I'm I'm con I'm not convinced that regulation or you know, because if you look back in history in the last, you know, ten, fifteen years, we've seen sort of in the in the financial service and the brokerage world, you've seen several issues. You know, one of them was um, the, the the conflicts of interest when it came to research and with, with with all these, and, and obviously we saw the real estate issues issues of the last year or so. There's always like this big regulatory response, okay. Mm -hmm. And my my reaction is, and and I I see it in a very practical way, not in a political opinion way, mm -hmm. which is not effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's, the it's, it's the knee jerk reaction. Oh, we have to regulate now. There's a there's always which a can bog down reaction. It can bog down the system and, and get something even worse than you had before. What, what, what I've seen is that, and everybody working in, in that world can tell you, is that um, regulation is, is, is very uh, burdensome, and I what happens is that you give a lot of power now to compliance, the word compliance. It's like, you know, so people are more worried about being compliant than about being right to the client, to the investor, to the consumer. Okay, so an example of that you had cited um, was where, you, let's say you buy a mutual fund or whatever, or you buy a stock, and they um, send you a big prospectus or a big report, yay big, that you're not going to read. It's, it's in very small print, and it's in a very um, um, non-layman terminology. Um, but um, they were compliant, then, weren't they? They, they gave you the information. Correct. But it's buried like a needle in a haystack. I could read um, basically Shakespeare. Okay. I can't read Shakespeare, but you know, you right. can read Shakespeare. And, and understand it better. You can understand it better than a prospectus. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, the question is ag again, you know, it's like how are you both compliant, non, you know, in and and also truthful to the client, and um, th so there's there's a tricky balance there, you know, I, because I asked th this question. This was a few years back actually when I when I, I went to the um, mutual fund uh, industry gathering and I asked this question to several major um, executives. And the response was, what do you expect me to stop selling? You know, um, 
I said, no, I, you know, I expect you to do a better job delivering it. Um, and it, it, it was a tricky conversation because I, I, I mentioned this. I, I, I don't like being paternalistic. I don't like that the approach that there's a right and there's a wrong, but you know that there's there's uh, there has to be a solution to that mm -hmm. sort of uh, challenge. And so it's it's an ongoing challenge. I think it's an ongoing challenge at all levels in the financial world because, um, <coughs> well, it's it's an, a challenge for all of us that invest in product trying to figure out what's a, a, a truthful product mm -hmm. um, because you want to continue investing and uh, everybody wants, I, you know, it benefits us all that the markets and the products are more transparent and are more fluid because it just helps the economy. Go on. Sure, sure. <coughs> I think the financial fr services firms um, want, you know, simpler, more effective regulation because, you know, it allows them to be faster and pursuing the opportunity. I think regulators want it because, uh, but it's like, how do you get there? That's the that's the challenge. And mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, I mentioned to you, it's like of my two big dilemmas in in at least in my business life. It was uh, this is one that I still haven't resolved. And I, what do you think is the right kind of um, regulation, and what is the wrong regulation? Okay, so in in the drawing board, the way that I put it is is that. The right regulation needs to keep uh, basically come to the to twenty first century technology, mm -hmm. okay? And it's actually not that complicated. Let me simplify it this way: if you can prove statistically that you, as a firm, have sold a financial product to your clients that, on an aggregate basis, they don't understand, to me, that that's a problem. So no matter what they signed or no matter what papers they received. If they didn't understand it. If they didn't understand it and they have the wrong product and you can prove it statistically. I mean, and I'm not talking about sophisticated questions. I'm talking about basic, functional, observable questions. Then that's a problem. I think that's a problem. And I also think that the problem is that you should tie it. And this is my hypothesis. You should tie it to people, not to firms also mm -hmm. to firms but to people mm -hmm. in other words every product launch and this is just like ideas coming out there every product launch uh, of a major mutual fund for example that it's being sold to you if some uh, you know there should be somebody that says i guarantee that this product is being transparently mm -hmm. sold not only that no everything that their prospectus it says is true but i essentially the board of that mutual fund should, as an example, I'm hold that person accountable. Should guarantee or sign off the fact that that the, uh, the same way that there's an auditing company, there should be like an annual or like biannual uh, um, understanding, or at some point that basically whoever is holding your assets understands the basic functioning of what they have. Mm -hmm. And the only reason, again, it's because it's not a consumer product. It's People hold their lifetime savings on this, and the health of the economy relies on that. Yes, so and, um, and people are, 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 are convinced by salespeople or uh, financial counselors to um, go into a certain kind of product, which they think is a minor decision, but actually you live once, and, and that's going to set the whole pattern for their successful or unsuccessful retirement, possibly, you know, by um, taking um, the wrong, the designer mortgage, they have all kinds of consequences where if you bought the smaller house and it was more in your means um, and you're able to hold the house and make some money, you, then you might be able to retire on the sale of the house, but now you went for this you know, designer mortgage because you had in your head this emotional need to have a bigger house, and bigger heating bill, and a bigger this and bigger that, um, and then you lose the house, and that has a whole lifetime um, impact, uh, that one little decision. Correct. I think, I mean, it's, it's funny because uh, obviously I, I, I base a lot of this in conversations with other people. In my case in particular, I, um, what, what bothers me the most is you're going to make lots of bad decisions when it comes to investments. Sure. And or you will have lots of bad outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 